Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome to part three of my Tainted Grail painting tutorial series. Last episode we did the base coats and washes on the characters and this episode we're going to finish them off by doing the highlights. So after this there'll be one more left in which we do some of the monsters. Now if you've enjoyed this series uh, don't forget there's hundreds of other videos on my channel. Painting tutorials, unboxings, battle reports, all kinds of stuff to check out and enjoy. And of course, go to the website at orderofgamers.com where you'll find hundreds of my very well-known rule summary and reference sheets. And of course, there's one for Tainted Grail. It'll make playing the game a lot easier. When you get it off the shelf, you check out the rule summary and get playing straight away. Anyway, let's get on to the painting tutorial. I hope it's useful. Enjoy. The first thing I'm going to do for all of the character figures is highlight the flesh because I can do it all in one go pretty quickly and easily. So some Kislev flesh is a nice light flesh colour and this will be good for my first highlighting pass. As always using my red grass wet palette, mix a little bit of water and I'll just put a little bit of Bugman's glow in there to make it a little bit more fleshy. And that also gives me a nice transition on my palette from a light colour to a dark colour, should I need it. And then it's just a matter of highlighting the muscle groups. So where the muscles are sort of uh, would catch the light, just highlight them with that lighter colour. It doesn't have to blend perfectly in. You're just giving a sensation of volume here or an impression of volume. So do it quickly and easily. Just be careful on things like highlighting the fingers and things like that so you preserve that shadowy detail that the wash gave you. If you can always imagine that light just coming down from above and hitting the surface of the miniature then you can imagine pretty easily where the shape should be highlighted. When you want to go lighter again add a bit of white to your flesh colour so it's just got a little bit of flesh in that and you can highlight the very tops or the very edges of the shapes. And really for most highlighting this is all you need. You need your base colour a highlighted colour and then a very top highlight and that's really all you need. Unless you're carefully blending them all together which I very rarely bother to do. When you're doing this really white highlight or light highlight do things like the knuckles of the fingers, uh, the tips of the nose, places where the light would really hit. Just above the eyes there, cheeks, tips of the ears, remember for this highlight you're covering less of an area than you did with the other highlight so there's a sense of volume. And there we go, very easy. Let's move on to the next one. Just the same process, I'm going to go through this with all the characters. Now remember of course if you're using different skin tones on your characters, um, just make sure you use the right highlight colours for that. You can add a lighter tone of the particular colour. But in this case I'm keeping it quick and easy and, and pretty much using the same flesh colour throughout. Another place that's always good to highlight are the elbows and the knees if they're exposed because they also catch light where the bone hits the flesh a bit. Here I'm on to highlighting Ali, and she had a bit of a funny nose this figure, it was a bit sort of flattened so a highlight makes that nose lift a little bit. You can sometimes repair slight errors with the actual 
figure itself with a bit of painting. Highlighting the neck muscles there. And sometimes it's good to run a little highlight just on the edge of where uh, the flesh meets straps and things like that. It just delineates the shapes between the flesh and the clothes or straps or whatever. It may be a little non-intuitive to put a highlight under somewhere where there'd be a shadow, but it's it just highlights that difference in tone. Next up is Arev. He's got some big muscle groups on the back there to highlight. Now there's all this bumpy stuff on his arm which is actually his tattoos. Um, for some reason they made the tattoos 3D. So you don't want to highlight that because we'll be painting that in as a tattoo later. And better highlight those fingers. You can see I'm looking down on the figure here as I highlight, so I'm imagining that the light is coming from above and where it's going to hit the figure. A bit of highlighting on the nose and the cheeks. And of course the muscles of the chest. Next up is Neve, and again she's got these tattoos kind of actually ingrained into the flesh uh, for some reason. So I painted around those uh, with the highlight colour. back of the calf. And you can see how there I just got a slightly darker colour from my palette to blend in my highlight a little bit. This is the great thing about having a wet palette because you have a range of tones on your palette and you can always access exactly the colour you want. Here you can see I'm painting in a lighter flesh tone and using that base colour as kind of a shadow. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to know where to put the highlights if there's no clear muscles defined on it. Just um, do a little bit of variety between the darker and the lighter bits and it'll give the impression of muscles. Now I'm just dabbing in some lighter highlights. And of course the nose and forehead. Now that I've done all the flesh tones I'm going to start highlighting uh, the fabric and the rest of the models. So for this it's just a matter of lightening up my base colour and using that as a highlight colour. So for Maggot here, for his robes, I use Scrag Brown. I've added a bit of Shabti Bone to that to lighten it up. And now I'm just carefully painting the raised areas of that cloak. Now the tricky thing about Maggot's cloak here is that it's got quite a bit of a texture on it. So um, I could be really, really careful here and highlight every little spot of his cloak to keep that texture going. But I don't really go to that kind of trouble. I'm just doing a highlight on the cloak straight up and um, just letting the the fact that I'm obscuring some of the detail I'm not really worrying about that too much because you can see the detail of it in other parts of the figure. I guess you could say I'm putting a little less uh, paint on the brush and so it's not really clogging up the detail too much there but again I'm not being too careful about it. Bit of a highlight along the bottom of the cloak there also helps to differentiate it from the base. 
and there you go. Now there's a really strong contrast between the highlight and the shadow here, but that's okay. Um, if you actually look at fabric in real life, you'll see that it's surprising sometimes how strong those contrasts are and how deep the shadows can be in a fold of cloth. A little bit lighter on the knee. And there you go. As I said, I always usually do two layers of highlights just to make it a bit more interesting. So there's some little lighter touches just on the topmost parts of where the cloak would catch the light. Now I've got Steel Legion Drab also mixed with a bit of a Shabti Bone. You can also use white to highlight uh, up the, some of these colours. I prefer to use the Shabti Bone because it's, it's not so strong uh, a highlight. But just bringing out some of that detail on the feathers. And you know I could have made these feathers a bit more coloured and everything but I'm going for a relatively monochromatic look here so I'm not adding too many bright colours. And just picking out some of that detail. I'm not even sure what's going on here. There's bits of ropes and feathers and all kinds of things happening. But just by picking out the detail, uh, it makes it stand out and it looks good from a distance. You could, of course, go carefully in and uh, differentiate all these different shapes and give them all different colours. That's fine if you have the time. But this is a relatively fast painting technique. And the idea is to just make those shapes stand out. So it looks good from a gaming distance highlighting bits of the rope that's wrapped around the staff here. And it just lifts those shapes. Here I'm mixing a little bit of white with my Shabti bone to highlight the femurs or whatever bones that are hanging from his belt. bit of highlighting on the skull cap that he's wearing. Now I'm mixing some white with the storm vermin fur that I used for his moustache and beard and painting in some highlights on that. Bit of storm host silver and for this I'm highlighting the little belt buckles or strap buckles that he's got and I think this thing is made of bronze I could be wrong here but I'm just highlighting a bit of that and also that shoulder pad which I think is bronze just the edges of that Remember when you're wiping off excess paint on your palette, just give the brush a little bit of a twist. I do this, it's such a habit now I don't even think about it, but I just twist that um, brush a little bit and that sharpens the point again when I go back to the figure. Here I'm going back and just highlighting the knee a little bit more with a lighter colour again. And with this little dot pattern just giving the impression of that texture that's there in the fabric. Going in with a couple of tiny little white dots for the whites of the eyes. I put a little bit too much paint in there so I just went back with a dry brush and just dabbed a bit of it up and it looked fine. And then some other tiny little white highlights in the beard just to finish him off. And there's Maggot, the first figure done. Of course I'll fix up the base a little bit later. At the moment I'm just going through and doing all the highlights. A few extra tiny little white highlights on these things just to make them lift a little bit higher. Pop out a bit more visually. But don't overdo using white as a highlight because it can make the overall figure look a bit dull and chalky. So you have to be careful and not overdo it. 
Um, picking the right highlight colors is something that just comes through experience, but usually it's taking your uh, original tone and adding an appropriate lighter color, whether that's something like a bone color or a white, or it may be a, a yellow for a green or something like that, or just picking a lighter color out of the selection of colors that you have. And there's Maggot. Next up we've got Arev. And again, just a sequence of browns and things highlighted with a Shabdi bone. I get my original base colors, add a bit of a Shabdi bone. It's a good general purpose highlight color for browns. And to start with, I'm using it straight from the pot, with a bit of water of course, and highlighting the, that sheaf of wheat that he's carrying around with him for some reason. Since he's been scything the wheat, I suppose he has to shove some of it into his satchel. Then I'll mix a little bit of Steel Legion Drab with that and use the highlight color to highlight the cloth that he has wrapped around his waist. Straight a Shabti bone allows me to highlight a little bit further on those cloth folds. And while I'm there, I'll paint in the little bones or teeth that are hanging from his necklace. Now I'm using Bane Blade Brown to highlight his pants. And again, there's a bit of texture on these pants, which I'm not worrying too much about when I go and do the highlights. I'm just sort of dragging it along the textured surface. Uh, it doesn't matter if it clogs the detail a little bit in those highlights. And then using the Steel Legion Drab Shabti Bone Mix I already have on my palette, I highlight the straps of his shoes, trying not to drop the model into the paint while I'm doing it. This is when I should be using one of those RGG360 painting handles by Redgrass Games. It would make it very easy for me to hold this. I must use them more often. Old habits die hard, as they say, and sometimes it's tricky to learn to new techniques when you're used to the old ones. Back to the Bane Blade Brown, I'm painting on it a bit of a wood texture on the scythe handle, just with a very, very thin line, or a series of thin lines. Gives it a little bit more texture to it. This is where you really want to keep your brushes in good condition so they keep giving you those fine points. I'll highlight his necklace strands with the same color. Stormhost Silver is the very useful color I use for highlighting most metal colors. And I'll be highlighting the scythe blade with that. Just the edges of the blade. And also you can paint in a few little fine lines as well, just to give the impression that it's been used and that there are little scrapes and cuts on the blade. Now I'm getting Talon sand and mixing a little bit of a Shabti bone with that to highlight the rope that's tied around the handle of the scythe.
You can see previously I started doing this with a Shabti bone, but I lost a bit of the yellow tone that the rope had. So I wanted to go back to Talon Sand and add a bit of that yellow. Sometimes little subtle differences like this can make all the difference. So make sure you get yourself the, the right highlight color. If you use the same highlight all the way through, it's going to look a little bit drab. I'm using dryad bark mixed with a bit of white to highlight his satchel. Now I'm painting in his tattoos. I'm using hawk turquoise mixed with a bit of black to make it a bit darker. And using the illustration for reference and following the shapes that are sculpted into the miniature, I just paint on those tattoos. There's a little bit on the face as well. Of course, tiny white dots on either side of the black in the eye. And if you need to, you can touch that up with a bit of black until it looks just right. You might need to outline the eye a little bit so it works. It doesn't matter if it takes a few tries, you'll get there eventually. And there we go, Arif is done. Next up is Baor. Here's my base colors and wash. And I need a highlight color for that purpley blue uh, tunic that he's wearing. So I go back to Thunderhawk Blue and the original purple that I used just to give my base color again. That was Gene Steeler purple. Mix my original color. And then I'm sort of brightening up that color a little bit because it's been affected by the wash. So I'm going back to the slightly more purpley hue. And I can leave the shadow color in the areas of shadow. Once I've done that, I mix a bit of the light, light bone, almost white that I've got on my palette. Mix that with my bluey purpley color and just highlight the edges. Add a bit of brush strokey uh, folds in there. Blend it in a little bit. And again, having this color on the wet palette, I can choose exactly what tone I want as I'm getting the right mix of colors and the right blend of tones. And here's another very handy thing about a wet palette. I can go back and use some of the colors I've already mixed on the palette. I don't have to get them out of the pots again. So here I've got a light brown, grey kind of colour that I can use to highlight the hair and I didn't have to open up any new pots, which is always handy for speeding things up. You've got a range of colour on your palette you've used before, it's still wet, so why not use it? Using a grey, I'm just highlighting the haft of his axe, painting in lines to give it a bit of texture. And again, using a mixture of Steel Legend Drab and the Shabti Bone, which is already on my palette, I highlight the light brown of his boots. And at this point I got some iron breaker because I realized the tops of his boots were actually metal strips. So I'm repainting those metal. And then after that, when it's dry, I'll give it a wash of null oil and highlight it with silver. 
While I've got this color on my brush, I'll paint the half, uh, the head of that little axe and some other areas of metal, the chains. There's not too much paint on my brush there, so I can just run it over the raised areas of the chains. A couple of tiny little dabs of black in the eye holes. And for the dark brown of his pants, I've got dryad black mixed with a bit of white and a shabti brown. A bit of highlighting on the belt with the shabti brown. A shabty bone, I should say. Very useful colour. And some more general highlighting of his shoulder pads and straps. There are a few small uh, rivets in there on the straps, so I paint them with a dab of black at first, and then I'll put a, a dab of uh, metal color on top of those black circles. This just makes them stand out from their surroundings a little bit more than they normally would. And while I'm there, I've got the black on my brush. I'm just going to outline some of these bits a little bit more strongly. Where the metal, metal van braces meet the arms. Bits where there'd be a little bit more shadow. Sometimes good to just reinforce those shadow areas. Just under the belt. A couple of tiny little dots after that black is dry in the eye holes. If you don't get this right, don't worry, you can always correct it. And then back with the silver on those little areas, or the iron breaker on those little areas, which I outlined in black. And then really it's just a matter of going back, and if I want areas to be a little bit more highlighted, I might go a little bit lighter on them. Just until I'm happy with the overall look of the figure. And remember always, if you're looking really close up with your head loop or glasses or anything like that, Remember to take them off and have a look at it from a little bit of a distance as well because it's sometimes hard to judge the level of highlights you want to give a figure when you're looking at it very, very close up. Remember, you won't always be looking at it very, very close up, not when you're playing with the actual game. So it's good to get that perspective a bit. These little lines I'm putting in here just give the fabric a little bit more texture. I often do that to armor and to cloth. Just a few little thin strokes of highlight. It just gives it a little bit more visual interest. The next figure is Ali, and for this I'm getting my original uh, War Boss green and I'm going to use this straight from the pot to put down the base colors again uh, in the highlight areas. Remember when you've shadowed a color with a wash that it really does darken that base color so sometimes your first highlight pass is really just going to be the original base color. Of course, leaving some of the shadowed areas uh, behind as, as a darker green. So you can see that some of the flesh area there I've accidentally painted in green, so I'll retouch that later on. It's an easy fix. At the moment, I'm just highlighting all of my green areas. I'll just do a rough highlight over the greenery area on the staff she's holding. That's with a brush with slightly less paint on it. Next I'm going to add some yellow to that green, Uriel yellow in this case. Yellow is a really good colour to add to green to 
uh, bring it up to a highlight color. You can also highlight by adding white if you want, but adding yellow will give you a, a more vibrant green highlight color. And you can see it works really well as a highlight there on the green. Of course, highlighting the areas I've just done, but doing even less of the color on the very tips of the uh, highlighted areas. That way you get that nice three-tone effect. Dark shadow, mid-tone. Well, it's actually more, isn't it? You've got a very dark shadow, you've got the base color, and you've got two levels of high highlight. So quite a lot there, and they don't have to be all blended together, as you can see. It just gives a nice feeling of depth to the... Uh, clothing and in, in fact every area that you highlight. Next up scrag brown mixed with a bit of a shabti bone. I'm using that to highlight these brown boots. Don't need to be too precise here, just giving a feeling of the straps and the edges of the shapes. And I'll do the same for the satchel that she's wearing. And of course the armbands. All the places where I've used that brown colour. Now I'm using dryad bark mixed with a bit of ashabti bone to highlight my dark brown areas. A little bit of white added to that makes an even lighter highlight. Avalan Sunset is the highlight colour for her hair. And I'll add a little bit of white to that for a lighter highlight. Now I could dry brush this, this hair if I wanted to, but in this case I'm just painting in a few strokes to give the impression of the detail in the hair. And of course the usual treatment with the eyes and a little bit of redder flesh colour just on the bottom lip to give the impression of lips. Using a bit of a darker brown here just to accentuate that shadow between the hair and the face. And finally I'll paint in the flesh of that area I accidentally painted green before. And she's done! Next up is Neve. I'm going to go a bit lighter on her clothes with Wild Rider Red, which is sort of an orangey red colour. And I'm mixing it a little bit with the Avalan Sunset that I've still got on my palette to lighten it up a bit. And then it's just a matter of carefully painting in the highlights. There's quite a lot of detailed drapery here, so uh, it's up to you how much detail you want to put into this. I'm just carefully painting some of it, but not all of it just to give an impression of highlights. Remember to keep moving the model around in your hand so you can access the shapes you're painting most easily. Actually, red grass games make a really handy holder for this I keep forgetting to use it, but they're quite handy things. Uh, they're called an RGG360 painting handle. And um, you can just stick the model to the top of one and it gives you a very good um, handle, not only to hold the figure, but the top twists around, um, moves smoothly around so you can get to the model from any angle. I'm mixing in a little bit more Avalan Sunset, sunset so I have an even brighter highlight. It's going quite yellow for the highlight there, and that makes the orange look nice and bright, just on the areas that would catch the light the most. A similar colour is handy for 
highlighting her hair in a slightly dry brushy kind of way, though with a little bit more paint on my brush. Doom Bull Brown is the brown colour I used for the leather on this figure. I'm mixing it with just a little bit of white as a highlight and highlighting the brown areas. Retributor Armour is a good gold, very bright gold. I'm using that for the little gold buckles and things on the figure. And a Shabti Bone to highlight the fur around her neck. Here with a little bit of a dry brushy technique. A mixture of painting and dry brush, just to make sure that I keep the detail of the fur. Now I'm going to paint her tattoos and I'm getting a bit of Jean Steeler purple and mixing it with the bluey purple mixture I already had on my palette so it doesn't go to waste. And with this bluey purple colour I'm going to paint in these tattoos. Need a little bit more water there to make it flow better. And just following the lines of the moulded tattoos on the figure. The good thing about my wet palette now is that I've got all these little tones and different types of browns that I can easily go back to and use for highlighting basic colours like the browns around her ankles. Though really on second thought they should probably be gold bangles around her ankles. I've painted them brown but maybe gold would be better. A little bit more highlighting. And now I'm highlighting her weapons with a bit of silver. Using a dark brown, almost black, I'm just going back and outlining a few shapes where there's not quite enough shadow. Just around the figure, looking around, outlining things a bit. And also, if there's too much shadow, like there is here where her abdomen meets the dress, I can paint in a bit more flesh and make that line a bit thinner. These are just little retouches you do when you go back and you've painted most of the figure and there's just little fix-ups that you want to do. And there she is. Now it's time to do the bases. I'm getting a bit of Steel Legion drab on my brush, wiping most of it off on a paper towel and I'll use that to dry brush these dark grey bases that I have. So I want a sort of a kind of dirt surface to the base but I'm not painting in those rocks I want to keep those grey. It's just an easy way of doing it. If I get a little bit of uh, this dirt colour on the fabric that's alright just adds a bit of gritty realism to things. Then I'm mixing a bit of a shabti bone to that and dry brushing a highlight on top of that texture. After it's dry of course. I'll also dry brush a little bit of white added to grey on the rocks to highlight those up. A bad and black goes around the edge of the base for a nice black edge. And finally I went back to the base with a bit of Agrax Earth Shade just to deepen the shadows around the rocks and around the feet of the miniatures. If you have that little bit of darkness around the feet, it looks a little bit more rooted to the base. And there we have it. All five characters are done. And as you can see, from a little bit of a distance, they look great. You're not going to look this close up all the time, even though they look, they look fine this close up as well. But remember when you're playing with them you're usually standing back a bit or you're sitting back you're looking at them from a distance so you don't need all those perfectly blended highlights and shadows 
Personally, I'm really happy with this level of painting. It's relatively fast, but the results look good. The last thing to do is give it a coat of spray varnish. I use semi-gloss TS79 by Tamiya. It makes the colors pop a bit. You may prefer a matte finish. Thanks very much for watching and I hope this has been helpful. In the last video of this series we'll be painting some of the monsters. Until then, enjoy your games of Tainted Grail.